Hey guys, Adam here in the AeroWorks Workshop and we've got some things to talk about today. First, I want to bring you up to speed on what's going on with the panel. I know you've probably seen this panel laid out in a few episodes. Uh, my, my basic panel consists of a Dynon 10 inch screen, uh, radio and intercom, and then I've got an iPad going over here. But one of the things um, that you'll probably notice if you're building a Zenith is the instrument panel that they provide is not super stiff, it's kind of flexy. Um, and it's probably meant to be beefed up from the backside. But what I did is I contacted uh, Steve at Aircraft Specialty and we worked on a panel design together and this is actually a, a first rough draft. Uh, my final one is still being printed and I'll talk about why we made some changes in that. But this is a laser cut panel that they design and lay out on their CAD and laser cutting machines. And what we do is because of the, the pilot holes around the edge, we will basically use the factory panel to affix to the cross member in the cockpit. And then this panel will screw using nut plates and screws and will attach right to the front. But what I wanted to show you here is just how nice of a job uh, this panel cutting is. Now there is no way I don't care what anybody says that you're going to be able to cut a panel this accurately by hand or even with any kind of hand tools. Here is, uh, for instance, the iPad holder. Just want to show you the nice, how, how nice this fits in there. Perfect flush fit, screws line up. Same thing with the Dynon equipment. I've got my VHF radio here. Drops right in there. Everything fits super nice. Uh, I couldn't ask for uh, a better fit and finish. Now, a couple things. This was, like I said, a test panel, and that's because, as a lot of you know by now, I had to make some engine changes. And when you have a engine change from something like a Continental engine to a Viking engine, there are things that you just don't need anymore on the Viking engine. Things like a mixture control, uh, an alternate air source, and things like that. So I had some holes lined out for that engine, the old engine, and I just don't need those anymore. So we're going to remove some of these. We're going to take out the mixture control. We're going to slide the avionics, the radios down back to the center again. And we're going to clean up and we're going to add a couple small things over here, but not much. And then we'll send this out to powder coat. And then we can actually start putting our avionics, getting all the wiring done up nice in the background here. So that's what's going on with the panel. I'll put links down below. Now, if you just search aircraft specialties or aircraft uh, spruce, you're, they're kind of all very similar names. So I want to make sure and put the link down below. I might even put a link up above because you want to make sure you get to uh, Steve over at Aircraft Specialty. And Steve is amazing. He's a wealth of knowledge and he understands building home built aircraft. He's a pilot, he's a mechanic. He does everything. He's been a, a super great source for questions, especially as a first time builder like myself answering questions about engines, answering questions about mounting things. He's also doing the brake lines, the fuel lines, and the Super Duty behind me, so lots to come on that. I did get a box from Aircraft Spruce, not to be confused with specialty, Aircraft Spruce, which I'm sure we all know. And I'm gonna pop that open real quick because I think I can't remember what I ordered exactly, but I had a few small things here. Ah, we got the Rami uh, ADS-B antenna. And I got some switch covers, that's right. I couldn't remember what it was. Let's take a quick peek at that real fast. So hope everybody is building uh, their dreams, their aircraft of choice. Um, oh yeah, I got some nut plate tools. I forgot about that. So these are gonna be really handy for uh, lining up nut plates when you gotta drill nut plates out for things. Basically, you just plop this over your center hole and then it's a template for perfectly drilling those side holes for the screws. So I got a couple different sizes of those. I got some switch covers. That's just for some instrument panel stuff. Different colors here for fuel pumps and batteries and all that good stuff. And then we have another antenna from Rami. Now with the ADS-B, you can go with uh, the little short uh, stick or wire antenna. They're about, you know, 15, 20 bucks. I decided to upgrade a teeny bit and go with the, uh, the little shark fin style here, which I will show you right here. So here's that guy right there. Pretty cool, aerodynamic, got the studs for mounting it and your BNC there gives it a nice professional look for the aircraft. Now, one of the coolest things that I wanted to share today uh, hasn't quite made it here. So why don't we take a little field trip 
and go pick it up. Let's go check it out. So we're gonna get this stuff put away. We're gonna hop in the AeroWorks van and we're gonna go see what we got next to do today. So let's go, let's go take a look. Well, hey guys, as you know, um, I made an engine choice selection and a switch and the Super Duty AeroWorks 1 will now be powered by a Viking 195 turbo. And uh, we'll talk a little bit, we'll talk a little bit more about the delivery uh, time frame from when I actually talked to Viking or they called me, reached out to me and when it is getting delivered. Um, but today we are actually driving to pick it up. There was actually a small mix up on the shipping company's part, not Viking, on the shipping company's part. So rather than delay it a couple more days, I just said, where are you guys at? And I will uh, come pick it up from you. So normally this would have been curbside delivery lift gate, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do and I don't want it sitting around somewhere too long. So I'm gonna go get it. So we're gonna bring you guys along for the ride. Stay tuned. All right guys, well here it is, the Viking engines, Viking 195 turbo. Let's get cracking, we're gonna get opening this up and we're gonna see what is included in this engine package. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. Well, we got the engine mount in here, it's all zip tied in. Looks like we've got a bunch of uh, small parts boxes. We've got the radiator. Of course, we've got the engine still strapped down nice and tight. So I'll start taking this apart and then uh, we'll show the parts up a little bit closer. Well, there she is, guys, in the box. Take a little spin around here. A couple more boxes I gotta get out down below. There's the turbo and the exhaust. The intercooler piping, engine mount, intercooler. There she is. Nice big old gearbox on the front. Got our heater line intake and outtake. This will be hooked up to a heater eventually. And of course, we're rocking the Honda. What do we got? We got a bunch of this stuff out of the box. There's still a few more in there. Okay, what do we got here? Looks like we've got a nice intake form. That's for the cowling along with a template of how to cut that. So we'll work on that. It'll be the last thing we'll be working on. Yeah, let's see what we got. I think this is just coolant. But you know what? Everything is included in this kit, unlike some other companies where they leave that up to you. Viking includes everything you need to get this engine running, basically. So when they say firewall forward, they're talking firewall Ford and probably even more than that. What is that? Two gallons, high performance engine coolant. Sweet. Looks like we got some Viking swag. That's awesome. We're definitely going to be putting that up in the shop. Thanks, guys. Definitely got to have that in our uh, workshop area. So we're going to be digging that. And it looks like we got ECU and paperwork. Let's see what we got in this one. And some fuel line, I believe. Fuel line. We got the airplane info here. ECU. Got the binder. This is uh, everything having to do with uh, serial number, 
uh, all the uh, invoice and all that good stuff, wiring diagrams, parameters for the engine RPMs, operations. That's nice. We've got a checklist here, start, taxi, takeoff, flight, shutdown. So a lot of this stuff you're going to have to create as a home builder. They've already done a lot of that for you. Uh, we've got some stuff on taking the cylinder heads off to do adjustments, changing belts, valve checking. So we've got a main, we've already got a maintenance guide going on here. So yeah, lots of great info in here. And of course, we'll be adding more to that as we go through. But nice to have a little customized binder with all that information in there. This is the custom Viking ECU. And it has my name on here. I'm assuming it was, you know, programmed for this engine specifically, which it should be. So we'll set that in a nice safe spot. And we will proceed on with some more. Again, we've got the coolant, we got the hoses, we got the ECU. Valor, she's over there making sure we stay safe here in the shop, aren't you? Everybody's gotta have a shop dog, right? Right, Valor? What do you say? Huh? What is this? You wanna check it? Wanna check it out? All right, that's a good girl. Who's here? Better go see. All right. Of course, you know, I don't have a knife on me, but I've got a nice sharp piece of metal here. Let me just whoop. Cut that. Boom. There we go. Off we go. There we go, guys. I'll leave that in there, but custom radiator all welded up. Got all the inlets and outlets and all that good stuff. I'm going to leave that nice and packed up for now. No reason to dive into that just yet. Of course, we got our uh, custom engine mount right here. Ah, the header tank. Pretty cool looking tank. I actually like that it's all aluminum. These are just packing material. Packing material, nothing in there. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, you got your fuel transducer, I believe that's called. It's basically a fuel gauge. And then you've got your fuel pumps that are built right into the bottom of the tank and some other valves and things that are gonna go to uh, drain and overflow and so on. So we'll, we'll get more into that. It's like all of our extra stuff to make it all work. We got tubing and got a cool Viking cap here. It's cool. Got a Viking shirt. Got that right there. Got our throttle cable, tubing. That's cool. We got some Viking stickers. That's cool. Overflow tanks for coolant and the oil breather, I believe that is. Various tubing. We got uh, pre-filters with quick disconnects. That's for the fuel lines. We got our clamps. We got our engine bolts. Our aluminum beading tool. Firewall pass-through, nice aluminum machined one there instead of plastic, that's pretty sharp. High pressure fuel filter with disconnect. Bunch more fittings. We got those special clamps, the Odeker clamps for the fuel system. Pair of pliers to put those on with. And not cheap, cheap ones either. These are the Nippets, I believe is how you say it. They make nice tools, made in Germany, good brand. Here is our check valve assembly. That's where all the fuel taps into and goes in and out of. Got our drain for the bottom of the airplane. That's where it'll come out of uh, the, the header tank. Engine mounting hardware. We got our rubber bushings and bolts, two pairs of those. And we got our header tank clamps 
for the header tank. And we've got some small standoffs. I think this is a radiator mounting hardware, little rubber mounts, lock nuts, and so on. So whole bunch of parts here. I think I'm gonna keep all this small hardware in the box here, but everything's labeled. Everything's in a nice heavy duty plastic bag. So we don't lose anything. Nothing's gonna get broken or lost. Laid out real nice here. And again, there are videos, guys, on all of the uh, installation of all these items, whether you're doing the header tank installation, whether you're doing the engine mount, everything um, to install the Viking engine is on their website as well as on YouTube. They have very easily labeled uh, videos covering in depth how they set up the various types of uh, Zenith aircraft for the most part uh, with the various engines that they sell. So if you're thinking about a Viking engine, uh, take a look at those and see if that's something that you want to tackle yourself because that is part of the home building experience. Uh, and again, I'm a first time builder as well, been around aviation a long time, but you got to feel that it's in your, you know, your wheelhouse to be able to complete this. So there are some trial and error uh, when it comes to building, but for the most part, with the help of uh, Jan and Alyssa at Viking, the videos, the online community, the other builders who have completed Zenith aircraft with the uh, Viking engines, um, there's plenty of help out there. And like I said, they reach out to me when I was in need of an engine. They've reached out to me after the engine was shipped. The customer support and service, which in my mind, is about 80% of every purchase I ever make. Whether I go to a restaurant, buy something online, it's about that customer service. Do they care about what I order? Do they back it up? And are they gonna answer the questions when I have questions? And from everything I've seen uh, from Viking aircraft engines, that's 100% yes or even more than that. And like I say, uh, Alyssa and Jan are both answering emails and questions whether it be on social media, emails, or online, pretty much all the time. I don't think I've ever waited for an, a question or answer uh, to be uh, you know, answered, excuse me, a question to get answered, uh, more than you know, 20 minutes, it seems like. So yeah, um, this isn't a fast building process by any means, building an airplane. Um, not to say that it can't be, but knowing that you can get a quick answer and not miss out on something uh, that you're doing when you have the time to do it is a big thing to me. So. So far guys, um, pretty awesome setup here. I'm gonna be uh, a few things in the works here. I'm gonna be doing some traveling again, so there's gonna be a slight pause in the build. Uh, we do need to get the new powder, uh, the, the new engine mount powder coated, so I'm gonna send that out to powder coat, get it uh, matched up to the way my other mount was, and then we'll start kind of laying everything out here, getting this front firewall um, final secured so that we can get the engine mount on and start getting this engine on there. And that way I don't have to prop up the stupid tail all the time because all the weight's in the tail right now. So looking forward to getting this engine in. And hopefully by that time, I'm gonna have a nice, beautiful five bladed carbon fiber prop at the same time that that engine's going on. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, again, thanks for all the support on the channel. Thanks to Viking, thanks to Zenith. Uh, thanks to the supporters that I do have on the channel. I've run into a few of you out in the wild and it's really cool when you run into someone that's seen your videos and appreciates them. And I appreciate all of you guys. So um, hopefully I'll be able to see and meet some of you guys at Oshkosh. If you're going, I, I live about two miles south of there and I plan on going this year for at least a day or two. Um, and I'll be around all the uh, various suppliers to the aircraft uh, doing meetups and talking to folks and stuff like that. So. Again, guys, Adam, AeroWorks Workshop, Viking Power, Zenith Aircraft, good team, and we will see you on the next video.